right. Hi, everyone. My name is Jessica Payne, and welcome to the Brand Organics Podcast. Happy International Women's Day. Um, I think today it couldn't be more fitting. I have a special guest and a pal, a kindred spirit, a friend, an amazing entrepreneur today joining me, and I think it's kind of perfect timing. Uh, today, I'm joined by Gina Garcia. She's the amazing founder and CEO of Tricaroo. She's an author and filmmaker, and she's a veteran entrepreneur. So before I just babble with praise, I want to formally welcome you, Gina, to the show. Well, thank you for having me. We have so much we could talk about, I think, for, for hours and hours. But for the purpose of maybe today's episode, I'll do my best to, to, to keep it focused on a few questions. Um, the Brand Organics podcast... Um, you know, by design, I always try to put folks like yourself in front of my audience to, at the end of the day, to empower them with, with information, maybe some inspiration as well. And I think maybe that could be the, the, the focus of today. Um, you've accomplished so much in such a short amount of time in your, in your life, you're a young entrepreneur with, with such an amazing resume. Let's talk first about Tricaroo, because I think people are probably wondering or maybe even Googling it right now. Um, can you talk us up through Tricaroo and its origins? Because you have a really special uh, story about kind of what gave you the idea. And, um, and I think it's, it's worth sharing with our audience. Well, Tricaroo is, we basically make small footprint electric passenger vehicles. And it all started pretty much, I opened a bike shop right when I got out of the military and a customer had rolled in with a ornate antique pedicab, similar to the ones my mom ran in the Philippines. And she ran pedicabs, gypneys, the pretty much like a taxi service. Uh, like it, it looks similar to like a rickshaw. So um, my mom had told me many stories of her entrepreneurial endeavors um, in the Wow, it was in the 50s and 60s. So I thought it was uh, a really cool thing to have. So I wanted up buying the customers and um, put it in my, my bike shop. And from there, people wanted to start renting it for like weddings, private parties, and things like that. Um, and these antique mm -hmm. rickshaws are not something that Americans could be riding on um, without destroying. So from that, I started... Um, actually going into manufacturing uh, my own line of uh, pedicabs. And we actually mm -hmm. operated them throughout uh, the Southeast. And then from there, people wanted, to, wanted to, to start buying these things I created. And from that, it started organically going from people just didn't want to pedal and, and since people didn't want to pedal, I wanted to figure out <laughs> how to make things electric. And because the last thing you want to do is take your two kids out, ride three miles down the road, and then you can't get home. So from that, I started developing right. electric, electric, and I wanted up moving it over to Southeast Asia. Um, and this was in 2009 for a year. And I went to the Philippines. I went mm -hmm. to Vietnam, Laos, China, Thailand. And just kind of explored all these unique different transportation concepts that are 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 that are not foreign to their cultures, but as for, foreign to the to the American culture. So I kind of uh, just developed things like that, and ended up meeting some uh, great manufacturers of our electric parts and things like that, and started global sourcing and bringing them in. Um, to, to bring them stateside. And from that, we started building up our own um, Tricaroos. And the premise of Tricaroo is all of, our, uh, all of our products have three wheels, trike as in tricycle, and kangaroo, with that being a kangaroo, um, all of them take two. And there's actually more to the kangaroo side, and that goes back to my childhood, but really won't get into that. But, but just as far as the ability that... Um, the one thing that my bike shop show, showed me is that that there's a certain happiness that goes along with like riding a bike and riding your big wheel. I was on my big wheel every single day as a child. So basically I made giant big wheels for adults <laughs> and to bring that happiness. And let's face it, it's, it's better to ride with somebody than ride by yourself. So um, it brings smiles to people. It's the only passenger vehicle that you could ride on the road at 18 miles an hour, take it on the sidewalk, and then drive it into a building. It'll fit in an elevator, and that's taking two people. That's amazing. It's, it's funny you. You, you hit on a few things. I think what's more American than, not, than us not wanting to pedal? 
Um, <laughs> <it's> like, <laughs> but I think you hit on a few things and, you know, people, people listen to this podcast because I, you know, for all sorts of reasons, I'd like to think so. One is uh, we, we've got a lot of entrepreneurs. So folks who might be really interested in, in your experience in terms of really finding, finding your market. And I love how you put it. So I just want to highlight it's sort of like you spent time. And I think maybe that's one of the biggest lessons I hear certainly from other entrepreneurs. It's like, you just need to get the data. You just need to get the information. And you literally moved to Southeast Asia. And, and I love how you put it. You, you were studying kind of uh, a mobility solution that was kind of a no brainer for them. It was an innate part of their life, but you recognized the, um, the novelty and the, um, the fact that here in the U S we really, it's not only just demand or lack thereof and not having competitors, but I think, you know, you, it really, I think speaks to your ability to, to identify an opportunity, but really tailor it to, to a Western audience really, who, who I think our only exposure to it was probably being on vacation and associating it with a very tiring, uh, and expensive leisure activity. So it's really in inspiring. And I love the fact that your mom was an entrepreneur too. So you guys kind of share that. How does that feel kind of um, at your age now as, as an accomplished uh, woman entrepreneur, knowing that you kind of have an, a kinship with your mom? I don't know if you realize that. Well, I, th I think there's a beauty in, in, in kind of um, following in like a family tradition. Um, my... I, I come from a long lineage of entrepreneurs. Actually, my family, um, my great great grandfather brought um, movies to the Philippines in the twenties. So uh, built the first movie theaters. So there, there's wow. there's a thing as far as um, being able to. And then my mom's sister um, brought the hamburger to the Philippines with Burger Express. Um, I, I think she brought heart attacks to the Philippines personally, but, but um, she had 500 hamburger restaurants in the Philippines. She's the equivalent of Ray Kroc um, of McDonald's, um, but in the Philippines. And, and she, you know, she re oh retired God. 10 years ago. Um, so mm -hmm. there's always been this entrepreneurial gene um, within my family. My brother's an entrepreneur as well. Um, and so it wasn't, and, and, and same with my father, it, the, the cool part with my mom, and it's interesting because I do a lot of trade shows and events and, and there's an, a natural assumption that the business, when I say it's a family business that I'm following in my family footsteps is that it's my father's business and not my mother's, you know? So, so my mother co-signed my first loan um, when I got out of the military to open up a bicycle shop and, you know, the option was money for college, um, or money to open a business. And it wasn't like you have to go to college, even though I went to college, it was, well, if I paid for you to open a business that will pay for your college. So it, it was that, that way of where do you put money that's actually right. going to benefit you the most. And, and sometimes I think people forget that, like, if you invest in a person versus invest, you know, investing in like a business for somebody that you're, you're, you're better off getting your money back or, or money towards a future endeavor than just throwing it at something where you're just paying for it and there's no, you know, money coming back in. So my mom invested in me um, with, you know, co-signing a loan it was like $45,000 loan to open my first bike shop and and that was in 1998 mm -hmm. and you know now almost what, what is it 19 mm -hmm. years later um am I doing math right <laughs> um it, it, it it's crazy to be like that little bike shop is now I'm now a manufacturer like I had um, it was funny because when I met you last year in LA and I did the right. uh, abilities um, trade show, one of the people there were like, you're the millennials Ford. And that was like one of, that's like my favorite quote. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? It's like, you're, you're creating the transportation for the, the new millennials <laughs> that is more eco-friendly. And even though, you know, people were okay. classified as a mobility aid, um, I didn't start off with any intentions of making any kind of mobility scooter, but you have mm -hmm. to fall into a category. 
And that's, I think, where people are most comfortable in is putting us into that category. But we have college mm-hmm. students. We have moms that take their kids to school. We have people at tractor poles and, and car shows that buy our trucks to get around, like, the, you know, area. And, and, and um, But at different venues where you're having to walk acres and acres and acres to look at different things from boats to cars to tractors to these kind of events, flea markets and swap meets, it's mm-hmm. a it's an easier way to get around and see more things. Let's you know? talk a little bit about um, your audience because I, I think that's a perfect segue to that. Our audience is, is pretty much everyone. It, it's one of those things, it's like when we create your business plan and developing our initial business plan and we entered a whole bunch of those business plan competitions and things like that, everybody's like, you got to narrow it, you got to narrow it down, you got to narrow it down, you got to know who your audience is. But sometimes, regardless of how planned out you think your audience is, it's not. And literally a customer showed us who our audience was. And we got a call and and they were doing the Turkey Rod Run, which is a car show um, in Daytona Beach. And they were like, you know, the car shows are banning golf carts. And I'm like, okay, like, I don't understand why this matters to us, but thank you for your purchase. It's like, well, you have to show you, you when you get there, you'll understand. And we showed up at the this car show. I, I literally bought a small RV because it was a four day event. And I was like, if we're going to be here for four days, I want to at least be a little comfortable. And we went with the intentions. Mm-hmm. We only bought three trikes there. We thought we were just going to be handing out flyers. And then we saw these waves of mobility scooters that were like, souped up pulling wagons people pulling like on their go-go pride mobility scooters they're pulling their wife on a wagon on the back because they have they didn't know a trikeru existed <laughs> and we literally yes. sold 10 trikes in less in in, in a day wow. and a half we had to keep on driving back from daytona to orlando which was an hour drive to go get more product People were walking up and they were just saying, is this charged? And we're like, yes. And they were like, just giving us cash. It was the craziest thing I've ever experienced. And so we actually had to pivot our, our business as a company um, for this market. And and we've, we've grown 300% since November um, as a company. We've, I've developed three new trikes specifically for that kind of arena of car shows, tractor wow. pulls, boat Congratulations. shows. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It, it's, it's been amazing actually. And we, we had to just, we had to do a shift like an, an extreme shift as far as, um, you know, we're at events every weekend and, and sometimes you just have to forget about having weekends. Uh, you know, entrepreneurs don't, we don't sleep and, and you have to go, you have to follow the money as far as, Um, it's not always about taking the weekends off and it's been, you know, it's been hard for me, um, because usually, um, I, I, I do a lot of activities with friends. I take my mom bowling. I have a great relationship with my mom and usually that was on weekends and I've had to shift everything so I could be at a car show in Daytona or a tractor pull in Fort Meade, an event, uh, you know, the auto fest in Charlotte, um, or in Moultrie, Georgia, and that's weekend to weekend. We've had to, we, we bought a big old toy hauler. We bought more vehicles and we're currently buying a fleet of U-Haul trucks that we're having redone. So that way I can have teams of people to go to these events to sell trikes for us. So we've had to learn how to pivot and our audience are, you know, they're people that are mechanics. They're people that like to go out and do activities. They're, they're RVers, they're baby boomers. They're people that don't want to, that don't log in. Like when I asked for their email address, they're having to call somebody that gets so their, their kids email address. Cause they don't have email addresses. When I asked, can I text them a receipt? They're like, I don't know if our phone gets texts. So it, it, it's, it's the, this down home country group of people and they're amazing. And they got they get the product instantly, right. which which has completely blown my mind because our, our our first go around with our product were literally moms taking their kids to school, and now it's you know uh, 
semi-retired people that are living in their RVs, living the dream. They're in a different city or state every weekend, traveling with their $100,000 cars, you know, their old Model Ts, their old Mustangs, their old Camaros, and they're looking for Corvette parts. And they use the Triker, and they're getting Trikeroos to match their cars. They're like, can you get a custom paint job? And that's awesome. You know, we're building, we're building the millennial vehicle for the people that are, are, are driving the vehicles of the 1900s, which is crazy. So Gina and I had so much to talk about. We actually decided to split this podcast into two parts. So this was part one and stay tuned for part two, where we dive into some other areas with Gina, um, specifically how she stays congruent. If you have questions for Gina or want to, uh, discover a little bit more about her amazing story, or maybe even want to buy a Trikaroo, visit trikaroo.com. Gina also has an amazing um, contribution to a book that's coming out. It's available on Amazon and Kindle. I think it's for only 99 cents. So it's, it's, it's a pretty big steal. It's called Breaking Through How to Reinvent After Failure. So, so I encourage you to check it out. Thank you so much for listening to the Brand Organics podcast. Again, I am your host, Jessica Payne. If you've got questions for me or want to hear a topic or maybe even want to become a guest on the show, visit me at jessicapayne.us or find me on social. Have a great day, everyone. I'll see you next time.